Hey everybody, this is Dante Highwater and this is Writing with Dyslexia and I am going to read chapter 2 uh, in my book The Conduit. This is um, after uh, uh, Monk, which is uh, Charles T. Appleton, uh, has his interview with uh, Joseph, um, Rose, uh, Joseph Smith and uh and they they break for lunch and then they uh and then uh the news broke that there were three men uh that were killed and uh a police officer from new york uh talks talks about what he can talk about and everything and um and basically doesn't really give a whole lot of information but tells everyone that the police are involved they're in you know they're going to investigate on this and everything so um joseph joseph tells uh, charles and says that he can't make it because the police have already started to shut down the streets where he was at and uh and then he makes a um a statement saying you might want to check into the coven and that's and I get in I get involved in all that uh, later on within the chapters and everything and uh, this is chapter two this is a continuation um, I think this is where Charles T Appleton goes into uh, into depression um, it's like a lot of things are hitting him all at once and he feels um lost in, in in a lot of ways and everything so let's get to it the conduit chapter two hey it's me charles i'm sorry it's late somebody broke into my apartment this afternoon charles are you all right yeah yeah i'm fine the police just left what did you what did the police say they weren't too impressed i think they were playing it off playing it down all they said was was uh contact them if pretend comes back pretend that's an odd name i wonder why he he's calling himself that because it's a game to him he wants credit for for the lives he he takes before he left my apartment his skin started to peel from his face. That's when he ducked out of the window. Peel? Yeah, like how a snake sheds. Charles, do you... Do you think he could be a, a conduit? Yeah. Yeah, that's that crossed my mind. Alex, what is it, Charles? I think Pretend is using skins from his victim. I think he's... I think he's skinning them alive than wearing the victim's flesh. Did he tell you that? No. It's a hunch that I'm, uh, that I'm working on. I don't know. But he also said that he, that he knew me. Do you have any idea where? If, if he's wearing other people's flesh to disguise himself, then no. No, I, have, I haven't had a clue where where he would where we would have met Christ Charles are you are you safe in your own apartment the police said I I did the right thing in calling them because I did what pretend told me to do they also said that that if if he wants if he wants me as as a contact he's not going to bother me until he kills again fuck that's so that's so fucked up Charles keep your keep your windows locked and promise me that you'll take care of yourself I hope most of the I hope the most of the unpleasantness is behind you I agree this is why it's important to keep the interviews going I'm not going to lie I'm terrified pretend wants me t to live to live my life as if nothing happened which I'm going to do Hey Charles, I gotta go. But we, but are we still 
on for tomorrow. How does 11 a.m. sound? Sounds great. I can't wait. Bye. Click. Bye. Telling Alexa that I'm terrified was the understatement of the year. So much that I, uh, I'm, I'm unsure if, if I'll make it through the night. I lay in silence with the be with the beating sound of my heart, w worrying if my heart w may explode, pissing off pretend in the process. What would pretend do then? What conduit would he use as a mic mouthpiece to announce the latest the latest of his masterpieces, unleashing a, a tapestry of death to the city of New York? What if he grows bored with me? What will I do then? And so I stare at the ceiling, waiting for sleep to fall upon, to fall on me, reminding myself what Edgar Allan Poe referred to sleep as. Edgar referred to sleep as little slices of death. Well, I'll be next. Will I be next? I wonder. The next day, the morning light appeared through the slats of the blinds, which I always have pointed upward towards the ceiling to keep the light from my eyes. The day felt clean and crisp as I got out of bed, turning down the shower while listening to the radio as, as it blares classic rock from, from, the speak, from my speakers. I didn't want to hear any more of the victims that pretend may or may not have killed. I'm here only I'm I'm here doing my thing as as always and that's what pretend wants me to do to live my life as I always have before he made contact with me there's a part of me that wants that wants to give give a a proverbial a proverb proverbable <laughs> I can't pronounce that middle finger to pretend but a part of me is fascinated with him Unsure of who he or who he, unsure of who or what he is. When the officers came over last night, they weren't sold on the on the man that paid me a visit was indeed the killer, because others have confessed to the crimes as well. None, but none of them couldn't describe the the murder scene. The population of New York is nineteen point fifty four million, but the so so the chances of me running into the killer is slim according to the officer the officer jokingly said that said that out of 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 the 19.54 million only half of the population is crazy which i found funny at, but at the same time disturbing feeling the beads of of water hitting the surface of my skin made me feel like a new man again washing the loop Watching the watching the lukewarm water take take the stress and worries down with it as as it all went swirling down the drain. Does just like Joseph did in 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 this bat bathroom yesterday. I also sighed. I also sighed, letting go of all tension and cares. The smell of fresh soap and clean. And clean hair gave me a feeling that all is well with the world. A message flashed across my cell phone. It's Alex letting me know that she's coming over and, and that she's proud of me for not boarding up my windows and doors due to what happened yesterday. It's a joke that I appreciate. I texted back let, thanking, thanking her for keeping our appointment and jokingly told her that I should have the windows boarded up soon then hit send I quickly dried myself and made my way to the bedroom still feel, still having feelings that maybe pretend is still watching me or that he is in my room which he wasn't as I dressed I kept playing in my mind pretend's face peeling just before he left my apartment if he's if he is a conduit then he, there must be a limit to how long he can take on a form. The thought of of him being a shapeshifter didn't last as, didn't last in 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 my thinking, because because the body morphs rather than peels. A man from the radio station asked the officer 
if the three men were skinned alive. I of, of course, the police said nothing about it, but let's take for a moment that the three men were in fact skinned alive like how the reporter asked the officer then is his is he then is he using the flesh as a costume or like a like clothing the thought scared me but intrigued me there is only one way for the for this to happen and it's only a theory could pretend have what's called cellular manipulation the ability to move cells by his own will while pondering this i started i stared i, I start i was startled by a knock at the door snapping me out of my deep thinking yes i shouted walking towards the door it's me alexa not the, not a strange man wearing a fedora she said jokingly i opened the door seeing alexa smiling what's the matter too soon said alexa sticking out her tongue at me i held the i held the door open with with my hand with my head perched on on the edge of the door do you want me to close the door on you or later i asked haha very funny but as i said in, in the text i'm very proud of you for being so brave in front of all this truth is i'm i'm terrified i couldn't sleep i didn't sleep well i said honestly hey someone that you didn't know came into your apartment of course you're scared i would be as well alexia held her hand to me and squeezed it and thanked and and i thanked her so let's get to work when joe was here yesterday i had him I had him talking about his life, including his uh, departed wife. Let's start on your childhood and go on from there. We are now recording. Just speak naturally. My childhood? Okay, let me think for a moment. Well, first off, my name is Alexa. My full name is Alexa Marie. It's a made-up name. My father wanted wanted to name me jessica while my mother wanted wanted, wanted to name me uh, alex so she combined so they combined them it's unusual i know but i like it i grew up in the upstate new york since my parents didn't like city living it wasn't a bad place to live just slow i don't know maybe there's too much wonder lust in me shoot i think there i think we all have it to a certain to a certain extent i think despite the slowness of upstate i found i have fond memories of the place like the tr outdoors trees hearing them sway back and forth as a breeze touches them or during the autumn seeing leaves turn colors before fall be, before falling off I remember watching my father raking them up just just so I can jump in the in the big pile. I personally love the sound and the feel of the dirt dry leaves crumbling as as I step on them. So why why did I leave a place that felt so much like heaven to me? Well, it's like I said, I just don't don't like the slow pace of rural living. But I can see myself going back someday as I get older. But that's not for a while now. Other than that, no. I don't have a I don't have plans to go back anytime soon. I couldn't picture you as a country living type. Do you miss do you miss rural living, especially during all that's been happening, like the crimes and like what and what happened 10 years ago? It does make it more appealing, but no, no, I didn't cross. It didn't cross my mind to pick up and move. I mean, look at you. You could have easily locked yourself in the in your apartment, but you didn't. Good point. So tell me, how did how did the change? How did the change come about? How old were you? It's embarrassing. I had two major life 
life-changing events that happened when I w was about 15 years old. At the age of 10, I, I saw a peak of what, what's to come. It's so hard to explain. It's like I knew that I was different in some ways. I'm sorry, I can't explain it further. 15 came at me like, like a Mack truck. I mean, I got blindsided by the changes that came over me. I remember waking up to, to, to find blood on my sheets. It smelled different, and I thought there was something wrong with me. I screamed out for my mother, and she came into my room, into my bedroom. She hugged me tightly, telling me that everything was going to be okay, and that I'm not dying or anything. That's when she gave me the talk, telling me that it's nature's way of telling me that I'm not a little girl anymore, that I'm turning into a woman, but the changes did not stop there. My head felt like there were thousands of voices speaking to me, but it was, but it was unclear what they were saying. It was like having the radio on, but unable to lower the volume. The odd part is, is that mother came back into my room that all of the voices stopped all at once. Just stopped. She always had a way of calming my fears, no matter what happened to me. My mother always placed my mind at ease. Now, now that I'm, now I look back, it's possible that that Gracie, my mother, did in some way stop the voice, voices by calming me. I mean, I was afraid for my life that I was bleeding to death due to my period. Were you able to isolate the voices? Yeah. That didn't happen until I, I went downstairs into the kitchen. I sat down at the breakfast table. My father is busy with his papers, as always. He seldom spoke to me, a businessman, which I, I really didn't have a clue what he did for a living, which I found sad, considering that I'm his daughter. But that's how it was in my family. My mother died when I went off to college. My father joined joined her soon after. But yeah, to answer your question, I did isolate the voices purely by by accident. Like I was saying, I went downstairs and sat at the breakfast table while my father read his paper. Everything was quite quiet until I heard voices. It wasn't it wasn't directed at me per se, but they were voices nevertheless. So I was sitting at the kitchen table having a bowl of cereal when I when I heard my father speaking. I dropped a spoon. Did you did you say something? I asked. My father didn't say anything to me. He just gave me a confused look when he then went back to, to reading his paper. Shortly after hearing my father's voice, I heard my mother's. I wish George would throw some of those some of these old clothes away. My mother's name is Grace, and yes, I heard the joke before. Good night, Grace. That's the line from my mother. That's the line my mother would say before going to bed. For the younger readers out there, look up George and Gracie on YouTube. Anyway, I sat looking at my father. He acted as if he hadn't gave a, a flying leap pertaining to his clothes. Aren't you going to say something? I said. My father didn't know, didn't throw me a dirty look. My, my father didn't throw me a dirty look. He just stared at me for a bit, which felt like an eternity. I went up, I went back to eating my cereal. I thought I was losing my mind. I didn't say anything else. I, I was too afraid to. I didn't want my, my father to think I was losing my mind or anything. I stood up and grabbed my book bag and made my way to school. It's it was when it was when i i walked to to the bu to the school bus that i realized that i could read minds my father Mar Mar my friend i'm sorry my friend marcy waved for me at the school bus 
we both knew better than, than to wander off, but we decided to walk to school rather than take the take the bus. It could it couldn't be more than five minutes into it couldn't be more than five minutes into walking that a man in a bus in a blue car stopped in, in front of us. I think the car was a Buick. I'm unsure. I never saw the man in my life. He said he was lost and wanted wanted us to ride along with him. I was I was I was then reading. I was then read. I I yeah. I was then. God, I have to rewrite that. I then read his mind. His thoughts hit me like, like a flood. They were clear, crisp, cri clear, crisper than my parents' thoughts for some reason. Marcy was scared, frozen like a deer and caught caught in headlights. She knew there wasn't something right about his, about this man, and she didn't read people's thoughts. An image flashed in my head, mind of a of a girl locked inside his trunk. I saw a rag that he placed over her face once he got once she got into the car with him, then tied her up. Then tied her up. From what I saw, it looks as if she she's she's been there for a while. Marcy, run. Tell mom to call the police. She ran to my to my house, leaving me alone with the with the kidnapper. I quickly ducked into the woods and ran f as fast as I could. I, I fell, I fell tripping, tripping a few times over mostly tree roots and rocks. I got myself up and kept running until I saw an old hollowed out log nearby. It was covered in green moss that felt like velvet. I, I crawled inside. I didn't. I did what I could to keep my breath slow and quiet. I stayed and quietly prayed to God that he wouldn't find me. I heard what sounded like gunshots going off. It was him, the man in the blue car. He, w he wanted me to know that he's out of his car by slamming the car door shut hard. Sounds of his shoes stepping on gravel came, came next. He, he didn't say a word. He was hunting me for sport. I didn't move and kept my breathing sl and keep keep my breathing low. The closer he came, the more I could read his perverse thoughts, which sank deep deeply in, inside my my head. He had every intention of raping us. God, this is so hard for me to talk about. I saw visions of young girls my age having their clothes ripped from their bodies as he tells them it was their fault he forced some of them to fondle themselves as he had other girls act out lesbian acts telling them that they that they liked it like being treated like this the second vision was stronger than the first i saw him rape ripping off clothes from a from an older girl she couldn't be she couldn't have been any more than 17 years old she lay there crying shaking begging him to to let her go she promised him that she wouldn't tell anybody about him i've never seen a girl so terrified as that girl in my vision he ignored her cries and pleads forcing her to watch as he took off his belt that's it pretty girl I know I know you want this and so do I he smacked her hard open-handed on her right cheek I think she nearly passed out from the blow it's hard to say he took off his belt and forced her hand down his pants telling her to to be good or she'll never see her family again with a few moans his pants fell to his ankles. I wouldn't say he's naked, but but he was only half naked. From behind him, I saw his naked rear as as he fucked her. 
as on on her dirt on the dirty table the table looked to be covered in dried blood it reminded me of a chopping block on the other side were shackles attached to it it could it could tell i couldn't i could tell how how nervous the girl was she kept eyeballing those chains wondering if those were going to be used on their on her as he kept fucking her hard and harder the 17 year old girl cried uh, cried louder and louder begging him to stop telling him that she's a virgin and that he's hurting her but he didn't care he just kept the same pace and he enjoyed it the man slapped her continuous shut the fuck up you dirty little whore he screamed I heard his voice as clear as day. My visions were so real, it was like I was there in his basement with him, hearing the screams, watching, still haunt, st which still haunts me to this day. They were, they were deafening to hear. After he was done fucking her, he placed the shackles on her wrists and ankles. He laid there. She lay there, tired. She didn't have any more fight left in her. I read her eyes. She knew at that moment that he was going to kill her, and she didn't care anymore. The man that drove the blue blue Buick cars started to started to slowly cut off little pieces of herself. The fingers were the first to go, then toes. He used poetry scissors on her, then hacked her to pieces. The man carves up his victims and wraps them up in a butcher's paper and places them in freezer. In a freezer, the fucking asshole eats his victims. Monk, I didn't. I didn't want to see what I just saw. I didn't know how to stop the vision when it started. I kept myself from crying as I laid in the hollow out log. I smelled cigarette smoke because he was standing just above me on the log. I looked up seeing him take another drag of, of that fucking cigarette. If he were to look down, that bastard would have seen, have seen me and I would have been dead. Well, that's what I believed at the time. Now, what happens next is unbelievable. A pair of tiny hands fell over my mouth. They felt like little, little, they felt like kids' hands. Shh, the bad man can hear you, she said. I got the car, I got in the car with him. He said that he was lost. I believed him. Please help me. I screamed inside my head. My name is Emily, she said to me. Shh. Stay calm, I told her. Maybe we can be friends, Emily asked, hoping to find a yes. I would like that, I replied. I'm, ner I'm, sh I'm unsure how I connected with her, but here I was in a rotted, rotting log having a mental com conversation with someone I didn't even know. But I was glad that it happened. What I'm about to say gives me goosebumps when I think about it. I began to feel powerful. My heart raced inside my chest, followed by a numb feeling that caused my worries to melt. The man's footsteps started to move as he made his way past the log. Something inside me just took over. I'm now working on instinct, not by emotion. All that was, imp all that was important to me was st saving the life of that girl that that's trapped inside the man's trunk i wanted to live i wanted to beat the shit out of that out of this man for what he did to to the girls i didn't care anymore i stood to my feet and yelled hey asshole i'm over here you motherfucker i can honestly say that i never swore a day in my life until that day I went back in, 
into his mind and open every goddamn door that uh, that he that he had shut and forgot about every memory memory of 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 every murder that he committed flooded his thoughts i didn't know how i did this but i forced him to see himself naked alone in the dark woods i made him see a full moon that wasn't there because it was morning i forced him to see the dead walking to him like zombies crying out for revenge he fell to the ground crying trying to fight off something that wasn't even there he ran and hit hit his head on on the oak tree some blood came down down his forehead get them off of me the man in the blue a car yelled i i killed all of you you're not real he yelled he, he he yelled some more that's when he pulled out his gun and shot himself in the head never in my life have i ever felt so relieved to see a person die shortly after that i heard my mother calling out to me i listened again to make sure but yeah it was it was her my mother over here i yelled oh over at the edge of the woods over at the edge of the woods i saw i saw red white and blue f lights flashing oh thank god i said underneath my breath i ran over to her and cried to her crying she held me and i held on to her for dear life the cops found a man with a large hole in his head he has a girl in a trunk I screamed out to the police what happened that gave what happened that gave you courage to stand up to him I think it's the will to survive my conduit part of me snapped into action did you ever see Emily after that I let go of my mother and walked over to the blue car the police already popped up opened the trunk emily held out her hand shielding out the light letting her eyes readjust themselves from the dark to light but when emily emily's eyes adjusted she smiled at me like how i saw her in my own and in, in my mind it's you she said running over to to running over to hug me as the years waned on, I, I, I heard less and less from her. I'm a big Paul Simon or Gumfunkel fan. When I heard, when I, when I hear the song for Emily, wherever I may find her, I think of her. We only met for such a short time, but she made a big dent in my life. I just hope that I, I did the same for her. I'm sure you did well here's to hope as I listened to em to Alex's story I couldn't help but be moved by her fear and bravery in taking a, over and over a man that had every attention of doing unspeakable harm to her and to to the other girl in the trunk of the man's car there is so much to un unpack from Alex's story that I had to break it down in small increments. First, Alexa started to notice her abilities in in her budding years of her life known as puberty. This is normal. As the body changes into adulthood, so does the gifts. The reader must take notice of what Alexa said in her testimony. It wasn't a gift until I learned how to harness it. Joseph himself in, found himself in familiar waters with Alexia. He nearly hung himself due to his gifts, but in time he learned to control his abilities. Likewise, Alexia did just that. For those interested in the study, please read the Count of Flying Knives. Second, as Alexia told her accounts of laying still in a hollowed out log, she found the strength to fight back. 
this is the most important part of her of the gift that has been given given us every human on earth on on the planet has what's called adrenaline it's the chemical in the body that gives all of us the ability to achieve great feats of speed strength and in some cases people have noticed time slowing down just to save a person from from a moving car but if we all add the conduit part to the equation we get a very powerful person when a conduit break when a conduit's back is pressed up against the wall the conduit becomes that much more dangerous the super the supernatural mixed with the adrenaline equals disaster to learn more of this please read jason's account we had a 30 minute break i saw from alex's face that sh that remind re that reminded all that happened to her is that reminding i must have to re re rewrite that all that happened to her in the past in the past shook her up a bit we talked we talked and i made lunch for her i poured some wine getting her mind off of what what she talked about i also helped i also helped it also helped me with the fears that I'm currently facing as well. Alex just sat back on the chair as I as I hit record on the on the laptop. She lay back on the chair, taking it all in, and remem remind, remembering all she had nearly forgotten when she became a conduit. The next line of question is on her being turned. This is the story on. On how she became a vampire how were you turned it was when I was in high school after the man in the blue car I told my mother what happened to me she didn't believe me at first I poured myself into her mind as I walked around in in the dark stillness I walked deeper in, into her thoughts I saw my mother as a little girl playing with dolls then I saw her grow into maturity dating boys kissing and that's when I was kicked out the look on her face was the look of horror I didn't I didn't understand her expression at first until she told me days afterwards what did what did your mother say to you she could feel me moving inside her head her head her her head she was referring to it as a snake slithering that's when I found out that people can feel me inside their minds, but I found a way around it. There's always a, w a way around things if you take the time to find them. When inside a person's thoughts, you'll see footprints. If someone with my abilities walks inside someone's mind, then moments later, I walk around in the per in, in the mind of that same person then I can see their psychic footprints footsteps I have learned to ease my sight to, to erase my foot my my psychic steps after walking in in the person's mind I feel it's only polite now if a person wants to to stay linked to me then I leave just enough of my psychic charge in said person it sounds complicated but it's not I keep the psychic charge hidden so it wouldn't be traced back to me I'm sorry I wander off topic what was the question you asked me was it about me being turned into a vampire I feel it's important that the reader has an understanding of what a cerebral does it's quite all right. I'm glad that you explain more of your gifts to the readers, to our readers. And yes, the question was how how you became a vampire. Joseph liked the term vampire 2.0. Yeah, we played around with the wording. Vampire 2.0 2 didn't seem to stick with some people. I personally don't want to be called a luminary hybrid. I call myself a vampire.
my boyfriend Jason and I sometimes drink each other's blood I love the feel of blood over my white soft flesh not all all of the time of course only when I feel a little bit sexually naughty so how is it that you became a vampire it was during my freshman year in high school a boy came to our to our school I believe he was from the Bronx I can remember him clearly in my mind's eye tall thin long black hair just above the shoulders he didn't smile or say much he also wore a long black trench coat that made him look so very hot everyone at school thought he was a bit odd which I liked maybe because I felt a bit of, 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 of a freak as well my friend Marcy wanted to go out with him shit nearly all the girls wanted him odd and out of place but no one played a prank or teased him he gave off a presence that made the girls in the, in the school drool and made the boys submissive to him he just had a way about him I dropped off notes in his locker and said hi to him in the hallway I'm sorry I'm not trying to rem I'm trying to remember his name it's funny how one forgets I think his name was Orion yes yes I believe so yep Orion it was late spring school was closing for the summer Jimmy's father owned the biggest property in the area and Marcy and I went to the bonfire party it's a mixture of stupidity and horniness which I don't think we ever outgrow but it was a special night for me I was roasting marshmallows on on a stick when he came and sat beside me the wood crackled and popped as the fire as a fire grew hey are you the girl that that keeps putting letters in my locker locker at school he asked I didn't know what to say or do at the moment I took out the marshmallow from from the open flame flames and blew on them do you want one I asked hand handing him a stick yeah it's me I'm I'm sorry if I if it came off lane Orion tossed his hair back smiled and blew gently on on the marshmallow here he said handing me back the stick I'm not too much into sweets I remember noticing how tanned he looked by the fireside the orange flames covered his his pale complexion he looked so cute with his long moppy hair he turned to me then I uh, then said what I was what I was waiting what I was waiting to hear him say I like you you know would you like to take a walk with me I promise I won't bite well not hard anyway said o Orion holding his hand out to me I of course took it I walked with him into the woods leaving the fire and in the noise of kids getting wasted on cheap beer as we entered the stillness of the dark I felt his hand brushing up against mine I of course invited him in I never felt someone's hand f f hand feel so cold are you afraid he asked of I answered some are creeped out by the coldness of my hand and I meant I meant what I said to you by the by the fire you didn't look like you, you don't like sweets yeah well I'll keep that in mind he grabbed me and our our lips and lined. It's okay if you want to. I want you to, I said. I spoke as if I was out of breath. Orion was a gentleman that night. I, on the other hand, did not want a gentleman. I wanted him to take me, and he did. The rest is the rest is history. 
I gave myself to him. He bit me while we made love. As he did that, as he did that, I saw Orion's belt over over us. The drain felt so good as orgasms stacked upon themselves. We could have drink. He could have drained me dry, and I wouldn't care. I loved him. The next morning, I found myself alone in the woods. A note was attached to a tree with a with a pocket knife st sticking through it. It was a dear John letter, basically saying that he he must be moving on. I began feeling thirsty, not like a mouth is dry thirsty, but more of a hungry thirsty. The letter said that there were two jars hidden somewhere in the forest. Then a P.S. Rely on sense of spell. I crumbled up the paper and threw it on the ground. What the fuck did he mean by rely on sense of smell? I, I said, feeling the thirst getting worse. The hunger pains were increased where incre pains increased rapidly. My nose picked up a scent from a distance. Somehow I knew the distance down to the tenth of an inch, but how? To me, the smell had a meaty scent like a steak grilling on, yeah. grilling on a grill or a big fatty cheeseburger. My mouth, my mouth salivated. I followed the scent f feeling more like an animal than a human. My ears became sensitive to sound. I followed the scent of the intoxicating smell. My sight shifted to a different way of, of seeing. I saw the glow, glowing orange jars of blood under the pale pile of leaves. I ran to it and grabbed the jar. I twisted the lid hastily and drank hard, giving in to the need to drink blood. The blood dripped from my from the edges of my mouth. It tasted sweet. Then my vampiric abilities began became stronger. The scent the sense of smell increased. I found the second jar quicker than I did than I did before. I drained the second jar. I drank the second jar. jar. Then the need stopped. My vision went back to normal. I found myself learning two different lives. One, learn, learning the gifts that were give, they're handed down to me from genetics conduit. And now, learning a total new set of skills in, in being a vampire. What kind of shit is that? In some ways, Orion helped me. He gave me what I needed. The blood from the jars was dear. I to I to this day like to hunt and drink deer's blood. Overall, no, I really don't need to. I don't really need to. How did how did you overcome the obstacles that laid in front of you? I think it was about a month later that I received another letter from Orion. He sent me letters from the mail, helping me to hone in my second abilities. The conduit part I had to figure out for myself, which was fine. One of Orion's letters s stated that he knew how different I was and that I could be I could do greater I could do great things with the skills that I now possess, which now makes me think that he knew of a war that was that was coming. He was my first, and, and that night is still special to me to this very day. Would you give up any one of your abilities just to be normal? I don't know what normal is. I'm not trying to be cute or anything. I just don't know what it's like to be a person without gifts. A long time ago, kids were born without legs or, or arms were given prosthesis, prosthetic arms and legs. Kids couldn't use them, no matter how hard they tried. They just couldn't use them. Why do you think that is? Because it was never registered in their brain in the first place. Okay, let's say that I get myself into a car accident, 
and a surgeon had to amputate my arm. I can use a prosthetic arm in time, but a person born without limbs can't. It wasn't part of who they are in the first place. What I'm trying to say is this, for me to be stripped from my supernatural gifts would be a major blow to who to me and who and to anyone that that is a conduit because it would be like losing a giant piece of yourself being a conduit is who i am when i became a vampire i learned and and the conduit part of me helped to deal with that As we came to an end to this interview, as we came, as I come to, to the end of this interview, can you tell the readers what happened 10 years ago? From the war between the luminaries and ourselves, one thing is certain in this world. Evil replaces evil. Vampires turned conduits into themselves without knowledge. They didn't understand when it, when it came to freedom of choice and freedom as, as, it, as it is by itself. Freedom is a right to all, but not, but not only to a few. The luminaries couldn't control us. That's what started the war between us. Vampire hybrids fought, fought for us our vampire hybrids fought, fought for our right to be left alone. I personally want to, to thank Bradley and the likings. I want to thank you for your time. I know this was hard on you. Joe cried, uh, conjuring up the past. Please tell him that I said that. Why would... That's weird. Please do tell them why I said that. I don't know why. I must be thinking of something and then I let go of it. Alex just smiled with a, with, with a slight tear in her eyes. It was on my ple it was my pleasure. Please take care of, of yourself and stay safe. I'll check up on you. They exchange hugs and Alex left Charles with a kiss on, on his cheek and, and she walked out the door. And that is it. Yeah, there are a few parts there I probably will have to <laughs> I'll probably have to look at. But that is the day in the life for overall it's not too bad um like i said there's some changes i'm gonna have to make but overall i like i like what i wrote i thought i think it's really really good um there's probably some i probably could extend but that's the day in the life one of my videos got blocked today um uh, it was the uh, leonardo da vinci uh, Viacom apparently blocked it. I don't know why. It's a very, very short video <laughs> on Leonardo da Vinci being dyslexic. Um, you know, mere writing and everything. So, I don't know what the big deal was um, to that. So, just like many, many, many millions of YouTube tubers, I, I too got blocked. So I feel a little, little bit more like a YouTuber now. <laughs> so that was chapter two. I'll be doing chapter three sometime later. And um, chapter 11 is doing well. I'm doing, doing better uh, with it. Uh, I, I got some good sleep. I'm starting to be able to um, use my um, progressives, my, gla my new glasses. A little bit better I took a long nap and then all of a sudden it just seemed like everything just seemed I'm I, I feel like I'm, I'm adapting to them a little bit better than I have I could definitely read a whole lot better I noticed that as well uh, reading faster um, 
of these of these new prescriptions i just have to get used to it so all right well that's it for today uh take care and god bless